Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jeremy from The Renegade Coder, and it's been a really long time since I've recorded one of these videos. Um, but today I want to talk about how to compare strings in Python. Uh, but before we get there, I want to share a couple bits of news. First things first, I got one of these fancy little things, one of these Yeti mics. So hopefully the audio quality is a little bit better. Um, I am a little worried about you're going to hear all the keys in this, so hopefully we can edit that out. Uh, but otherwise, we got that mic. Also, it's Friday the 13th uh, in the middle of this coronavirus pandemic. I've had a lot of time off. Uh, right now is my spring break, but we are also getting next week off. Um, so I might have some time to record some of these videos again. It's been, like I said, it's been a while, but who knows? At any rate, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in. So there are basically three solutions, at least three that I've written in the article at this point, uh, for comparing strings. We could brute force, which we'll talk about right now. Uh, we can also compare directly with a couple of operators. So we'll get to those later. All right, so what are we actually trying to accomplish today? So we wanna compare two strings. We wanna be able to check whether or not two strings are equivalent. Maybe we wanna check if they're greater than or less than, but for the purposes of this video, we're talking about equality. Uh, and there are a lot of different ways to talk about equality. We can talk about equality in terms of like whether or not the contents of the strings are actually the same. So we'll go ahead and create a hello string, an str2, a hi string, and str3, another hello string. Now the question is, is str1 equivalent to str2? Meaning are the values exactly the same? In this case, they obviously aren't, right? They're two different strings. But str1 and str3 are the same string. Uh, but then from an identity perspective, are they the same string? Well, visually they're the same, but maybe they're not stored necessarily in the same place. They're two completely separate strings that just happen to have the same contents. So we can talk a little bit about identity versus equality. Um, we will, but for now, let's talk about just contents. Are the contents the same? Uh, and we can do that in a brute force fashion by making a loop using zip. So I'm gonna go ahead and say for a, b in zip, and then we'll go ahead and zip str1 and str2. And basically what that's gonna do is merge those two strings as if they were lists and make them basically pairs. So then we can start unpacking those pairs where A is the first letter of the first word, B is the first letter of the second word, and we'll go through until we hit the shortest word. Uh, so in this case, what we'll say is Okay, if A does not equal B, then we need to do something. We'll go ahead and say uh, is equal, we'll create a Boolean and we'll say it equals false, and then we'll go ahead and break. Now, this right now is not gonna work because we didn't create is equal ahead of time, so we'll go ahead and do that. Also, false, I forgot to capitalize. And now, when we run is equal, we'll find that these strings aren't equivalent. And we knew that already, right? Because we knew hi and hello weren't equivalent. But what if we actually change this loop? Let's go ahead and redefine is equal. And then we'll go ahead and change this loop so we're comparing str1 and str3. And now we run this and we check is equal. And is equal is true. So this is one brute force way of comparing two strings. Basically we're running each character is a time and checking whether or not those characters are equivalent. Uh, in this case, A and B are the stand-in for those characters. Now the problem with this solution is that zip only zips up to the smaller values. So let's say we create str4 and make that he. And since is equals still true, we can go ahead and throw this in here. And now we're gonna compare hello to he. And then if we check is equal, is equal is still true. So this solution works kind of. Uh, the main problem is that zip only runs up to the smaller string. So if one of your strings is a substring of another string, this will return true for that example. So there are some ways we can work around this. I believe there is a zip function that'll let us basically put in dummy values for the shorter string, but there are better solutions to this. So we're gonna move past this for now. Now, interestingly enough, the algorithm that we just implemented is basically already implemented and correctly implemented in the equality operator, uh, which looks like this. That double equal sign, uh, you see it all over the place. We could use it on numbers. We can do 
equal five. Okay, of course that's not true. We can make it four. Of course that's true. Uh, but it also works for strings as well. So if I wanted to do something like hi equals hello, that's gonna come out false. But if I'm gonna change this string to be hi, then you'll find that's true. So that whole loop that we just wrote, we don't actually have to bother with that because equality it already works for strings out of the box. In other words, we should be able to basically compare our strings that we had before. str1 is equal to itself. It should be equal to str3 because they were both hello. We could make it str2, of course that's not equivalent. And then the bug from before, str4, should also return false. So this double equals uh, actually tests for equality. It's not like the assignment operator. It's gonna actually check that these values are the same. Well, since we're on the topic of equality, let's go ahead and talk about some of the comparison operators. So we talked about equals. There are actually a few other comparison operators that work as well. So if I have high, then we can actually, well, we can check for equivalence, which we just did. But we can also do things like check to see if maybe high is greater than high. And of course it's not, but high is greater than equal to high. Yep, that works. And then maybe if I do ho, this is false because high comes before ho. So we'll go ahead and do less than. Um, and then pretty much any of these operators work exactly as you expect. So a is less than b. True. A is less than equal to B, true. A equals equals B, false. A is greater than equals to B. And then finally, A is greater than B. So you can use all these comparison operators to actually check how well these strings sort of match up to each other. Like, are they equivalent or how are they ordered alphabetically? So as you can see, we can pretty much use any of these operators to sort of compare strings either by equality or maybe we can talk about their alphabetical ordering. Um, I used it here to show you that, you know, A is directly less than B um, or less than equal, depending on how you want to look at it. And you can use these operators uh, to compare strings that way. And so if you, for instance, maybe wanted to sort a list of strings, you could. Now my caveat with this is that Strings are very complicated, uh, especially Unicode strings like ASCII strings. Okay, those are pretty straightforward. All the characters are in a certain order and we can talk about them like lexicographically. Um, but that's the simple case. Once we start talking about like emojis, how do we know whether an emoji is less than another emoji? Almost this like alphabetical ordering issue is nonsensical. And then you can even start thinking about other languages and whether or not, you know, certain characters from some language are less than a certain character from another language. And so this idea gets really complicated. So I worry about using the term alphabetical, um, but for your sake, and we'll talk about this during the challenge, uh, just assume ASCII for now, and then we can sort basic English strings without any issues. That said, let's go ahead and move on and talk about a different way to compare strings. Now, another way we can compare strings is through identity. So we just talked about equality, and for now, that's probably all you need. But the reality is there is another way to compare strings and just objects in general, and that's what this phrase or this keyword is. Now, it won't let me type that right away. Basically, I can do things like hi is hi. And that's true. Uh, and that might seem a little bizarre. So we'll go ahead and look at some other examples. Okay, and so now we've reached some weird territory. Some of these strings that look the same, contents are the same, are also coming up as the same when we're talking about identity. And here, when we talk about identity, we're actually talking about like location and memory. STR1 is stored at the same location as STR3. In other words, they have the same reference. Uh, and that's kind of a weird concept uh, because normally when you create objects, that's just not the case. We can create two completely identical objects uh, and they won't have the same address. But, but for whatever reason in Python, they've chosen to intern or basically copy the reference when you create a new string. So it's kind of a nice little efficiency feature, uh, but results in a lot of bugs when you try to show examples to students and tell them, oh no, don't test for identity because the strings are the same. Uh, but it seems to work in this case. My big caveat is don't typically use this when you're trying to compare two strings for equality. 
All right, well, at this point, let's talk a little bit about the challenge. So as I mentioned already, we can sort of use these equality operators that we talked about uh, to sort strings. And uh, we're gonna do that for the challenge, which I've provided you a list of strings. And you can see there a list of the 2019, 2020 penguins. Obviously this is before, I think they just traded for Marlow. Um, and this doesn't include Rodriguez and maybe a couple other players. Uh, but for right now, <laughs> you can go ahead and take this list copy it in uh, to your program and then run it and see if you can sort this list using sort of these operators above. Uh, and so there are, I don't know, 20 strings in here. And you can think right now they're in reverse alphabetical order, but you could think maybe if I can compare Tanev and Simone and figure out which way to order those, you know, you could swap them, maybe compare Tanev and Rust and you start doing some swaps. And next thing you know, you have a sorted list. Uh, if you're interested in writing some of your own sort of brute force solutions, I've actually already written an article about that. Maybe I'll uh, link that in the description. But for right now, just think about how you might write an algorithm to sort this list using some of the operators we've already talked about. Uh, and you're free to use whatever algorithm you want to use, but maybe use one of the simple straightforward ones. We're not going for efficiency here. We just want to get something working. Uh, and then once you have it, go ahead and drop it in the comments. And of course, I'll usually share an example uh, below in the comments in the article as well. Also, a quick little brag, I got this nice little table of contents running on the side of the site now. So now if you scroll around on the site, it should follow along with you. Quick little brag there, but <laughs> I wanted to show it off because it's really cool feature. All right, well, that's all I've got today. Usually we take a little bit of time to talk about uh, performance, but I didn't think it made sense to sort of compare some of the solutions we had today since they were so different. Again, I'll mention that if you want to do the challenge, there is an article I already have that covers that topic. And again, I'll link that in the description. Uh, otherwise, I've listed all my patrons off here. If you want to be added to the list, go ahead and hop over to Patreon. It doesn't matter which tier you grab, uh, I'll add you to the list. Otherwise, I think that's it. Um, if you want more of these videos, just let me know. I think the eight videos I have already are doing a pretty good job and I'd like to keep doing this. Uh, but of course, I need a little bit of support because grad school is hard. I'm trying to publish two articles a week, so it's kind of hard to uh, throw a video in the mix. But I had some time today, so I figured I'd go for it. Hopefully you like this. Let us know in the comments. Um, otherwise, take care.